In this video tutorial, we are going to build a web application for setting positions of players for two football teams. We use the diagramming library for JavaScript. The players are represented by shape nodes, whose shape is set as an SVG path that describes the contour of a t-shirt. The color can be any. The nodes can have numerous node or link labels, which are instances of the node label or link label class. The player's number is set through the standard node label property, which is built in for any diagram item. The field is a PNG image, which is set as diagram background image. Nodes, e.g. players, are dragged and dropped from the node list view control. We have downloaded the trial version of the diagramming library and unpacked the files. We create a new folder for our project, and there we create a subfolder called Scripts. We copy in it the scripts of the diagramming library, all of them. We might not need them all in this application, but it's a good idea to have all of them available. In the root folder of our application, we create two new files. One is the web page, and one is the JavaScript code behind file. We paste the image that represent the football field in the project directory. It is a big image. Now let's open the project with Visual Studio Code. It will be easier to edit the files there. We paste the code for a blank HTML file and then we add references to all JavaScript files from the scripts folder. We also add a reference to the code behind file, field.js. Let's get back to the final version of our application for a moment. We will add now the controls to the left. This is the overview control and the node list view control. They are in one div element, which is 200 pixels wide. Let's paste the code for it. The first component that we add is the overview. All controls require a canvas element to render onto. The overview allows us to see a miniature version of the diagram, where we can easily navigate to any portion of the diagram area. Next is the node list view control which is also bound to a canvas element. This is the stripe with nodes, which can be of any type, as per your needs. We have two more canvas elements to add, a large one for the diagram in the middle and a smaller one for the zoom control to the right. The div for the diagram is huge, and we place it right next to the div, which holds the overview and node list view canvas elements. The diagram canvas is also big, 1600 points wide and 2000 points high. And the last div element that we are going to add is for the zoom control. Note that it has a Z index of 3 which guarantees it will be rendered always on top of the diagram div, if the diagram stretches too much. With that we have finished the setup of our web page and we are ready to start coding the application. First, we copy a VS doc file that provides IntelliSense support for our application. Then we edit our empty JavaScript file. We add first some namespace mappings which make our code easier to write and read. 
we declare mappings to some classes from the diagramming and drawing namespaces. Now we will add the code to create a custom shape. The shape is used by the shape node class and let's check the online documentation for the property and its type. Here is the shape node class. These are its members. Here is the shape property of type shape. If we check the shape class, we can see that there is sample code to copy, which demonstrates exactly how to set a custom SVG path which describes a new shape with a custom ID. Now we create a new shape instance, which uses the t-shirt template. We set its ID and then we get the array with shapes from the shape class. In it, we assign the member, identified with an ID t-shirt to be the newly created shape instance with custom path. This way we can create our t-shirt shape node the same way we create shapes with one of the predefined IDs by calling the shape.fromID method. Now we are going to use the DOM content loaded event of HTML document to initialize our controls. We start with the diagram. The diagram is rendered in a diagram view object. A diagram view is bound to a canvas, and we have provided the canvas that will be used by the diagram view with an ID. Now we get this canvas element and create a diagram view with it. We also set two properties for the diagram view. First, we allow in-place edit, which is why the user can type labels inside the notes. Second, we set the behavior to be modify. This behavior allows modification of nodes, move, resize, delete, but does not allow creation of new nodes through mouse drag or drawing links between nodes. We get the diagram, which is a property of diagram view and sets some of its properties. First, we set its bounds, which is its initial size. The default unit is millimeter. We specify the location of the background image and set the image align. The image align property specifies how the background images will change when the diagram size changes. Finally, we turn off the default shadow style for diagram items and replace it with no shadows. Now, if we've done everything correctly, we should be able to see our diagram in the browser. Let's try. Here it is. We cannot create new nodes, because the behavior does not allow it. But we can see the control. And here are the two canvas elements for the overview control and the node list. Let's create them. The overview control is bound to the canvas element with an ID overview. We also set its diagram view property to the diagram view instance that we created above. Let's refresh the page. Here is our overview control. Next is the node list view control. It also requires a canvas instance to render itself onto. It requires another canvas as a target for node drag and drop. This is the canvas of the diagram control and it is set with the set target view method. We use two properties to customize the node list, icon size and back color. The icon size specifies how big the icons in the node list will be. We add next the code for the two other controls, the overview control and the zoomer. The overview control has a property of diagram view, which we bind to our instance of diagram view. The zoom control has target property, which we bind to the diagram view as well.
Now let's refresh our web page. The zoom control is here and allows us to zoom the diagram with a mouse click. The overview control also seems to work fine, but we cannot create nodes with mouse drag because we want to create them with drag and drop from the node list view. Let's add some t-shirt nodes. Let's add a new method called initNodeList, where we will create the shape nodes for the node list. We need to have a reference to the node list view and the diagram, so we provide them as parameters. In the method body we create a new shape node. Let's add a name mapping to the shape node class. We set the shape of the node using the fromID method of the shape class. The ID of our new node is t-shirt. The brush for it is red and we set its text to 0. Now we need to add this shape node to the node list view. We also need to call the method from our DOM content loaded event handler. If we have done everything well, we should be able to see our red t shirt node in the node list. Here it is. We can create new player nodes by dragging the red t-shirt. We can use the overview control to navigate quickly to various parts of the diagram. When we type in text, we can change the number on the player's t-shirt. However, we need one more label. The one that shows the family name of the player. This can be done with the new node label class, which allows multiple labels to be added to a single node. We will use the sample code from the documentation, but instead of corner position, we will set edge position. In our case, the edge position will be 2, the center of the bottom side of the node. We paste the code and change the alignment as well. We want the horizontal and vertical alignment of the label to be center. We also add a slight vertical offset. Now our t-shirt nodes support two labels, one for the number of the player and one for his name. We can create players anywhere we want. We can easily copy the code and create new t-shirt nodes with different color. Let's create a yellow node for the goalkeeper.
Here it is. Let's create two more nodes, a blue player and an orange goalkeeper for the other team. Here they are. Our application looks fine, but there is just one more thing to adjust. Usually, the number of players are quite big, so we should increase the font size of the numbers on our t-shirts. We have a property called Style in the Diagram Node class and in Diagram Item, which is the base class for all nodes and links. However, the Diagram class also has such property, which is applied to all items on the diagram. Let's use it. Styles are part of a theme. The target items of the style are specified with the prefix STD followed by the name of the class. We want to style shape nodes. Let's try the application now. Yes, the labels are larger and easier to read. We can customize the text color for the yellow node only. We will set it to a shade of gray, so it can be visible. And here it is. We can create different players with drag and drop, position them everywhere around the field, and zoom with a mouse touch, the whole area. And that was all for this video tutorial. Thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.